What's going on, everyone? My name is Under the Radar, and welcome to the EWT. This is going to be the week one battle, and I'm super excited for this. I'm super excited for this team builder because the team that we built is really, really, really unique, and I'm really proud of it. I spent a lot of time on it, and honestly, if I... <laughs> If this game goes badly, I'm going to be so upset because I worked so hard on this team. I really did. Um, but let's go ahead and get like the, the intro stuff out of the way. If you didn't watch the draft analysis, go watch that because it'll explain why I drafted what I drafted in the 11 mods that are above my team or the top two. My opponent's team are the bottom two, of course. And this week we are going up against Grandmaster D-Ray. Last time we played him in NCP, we won. And I'm hoping that in <laughs> this rematch, we can do the same. His team is extremely, extremely scary, though. He has Necrozma. Uh, really big threat versus my team, honestly, especially if he gets set up. I need to make sure that I keep my checks for that handy, because if I let that thing get set up too much, I just lose to it. I don't really have the best ways of breaking it. Luckily, it can't be, like, mono attacking. It can't be, like rest sleep talk photon geyser calm mind or dd or anything like that uh because i do have a silva uh, not a silvali i mean i do have a silvali <laughs> but i have a drapion which he can't just spam um he can't just spam uh psychic moves and i also have a kramer so he can't just spam ground moves and i also have a rillaboom which he can't just spam ground moves versus so like i have i have a lot of really good checks but i think he needs at minimum photon geyser earth earth power I think like that's the best set and then he could be like calm mind he could be autonomized he could be autonomized calm mind uh he could be recover or uh, like moonlight plus a setup attack so really big threat scissor i think is the second biggest threat to my team honestly especially like an sd or choice banded scissor so i have to kind of sort of play my cards right also i'm freezing i'm like ab i'm shivering because i'm so cold i can't stand it um scissor is a really big threat versus my team because if it's uh sd or bandit i don't really have the best switch ins to it or ways of dealing with it once it is uh set up so i need to keep my checks in handy for that uh needle queen it pretty much has to come because i do have a reggie Alegi. i'm expecting every single week my opponent to bring a ground type uh and i'm hoping to beat it and then win with reggie Alegi anyway <laughs> uh that's kind of the even the mindset that i'm going into with this is uh basically beat everything for reggie Alegi. so that is the mindset there uh i'm expecting life orbed uh if it comes offensive because realistically i in all of the mocks i did i saw life orbed offensive need queen because it does shred through my entire team i don't really have the best ways of dealing with it uh tangrowth i really expect to come because i have a zygarde especially with the people that he builds with i'm expecting them to say that grass knot will handle my zygarde so I'm expecting a really fizz def, uh, needle, uh, not needle queen, tangrowth with uh, like grass knot, toxic knockoff earthquake. That's kind of what I could see. Banded Zapdos, uh, Galar Zap is his fifth mon that I th uh, that I'm expecting to come. Choice Banded, Choice Scar for the two scariest threats. Uh, I don't really see bulk up coming, but if it is, I do have ways of checking that. And then he loves Cryogonal, and I do not have a good freeze dry switch in. At all, especially because that thing gets water pulse. My best switch in is Cobalion, so I'm forced to bring that just to check that thing because I know that he loves Cryogonal. He absolutely loves it. So, and then Raikou, I think, is the seventh mod on this team. I don't think the other four come unless he goes a super hyper offensive route uh, with like Shuckle lead webs. But if he does, uh, I know exactly what I'm going to do for that. So, Everything else I'm not really expecting, but let's just go ahead and hop into the team that I'm bringing. I'm starting off with this Zygarde set. This Zygarde set took a long time to figure out the perfect set because I wanted it to do everything I wanted plus some. <laughs> so I have enough speed to outspeed modest max speed Needle Queen in case he decides to run that for some reason. I have enough spadef investment to where at minus one with skitter smack grass knot from tangrowth never breaks my substitute. So I'm guaranteed if uh, I have this thing in versus Needle Queen and uh, Tangrowth comes in, I can go for a Skitter Smack uh, the following turn, I can lower its uh, special attack, and then the following turn I can uh, sub, and then I can Dragon Dance, and then I can sub, Dragon Dance, and then I can sub, Dragon Dance, and at that point it's pretty much GG, it forces in Scizor to bullet punch me, or even if I get to like plus two or so, I can start to beat down the whole team, uh, but it's going to really force a lot of prep on his end, uh, especially if he uses Tangrowth as his check to this. If I set up to plus two, I two I two a KO the entire team. 
Uh, if I set up to plus four, I begin to one shot the entire team. And if I set up to plus six, I literally just win the entire game. So uh, very, very, very good, <laughs> good check to like everything. I also have enough bulk in here to be able to take a choice band of close combat from Zapdos if I weaken it to be able to kill it with a thousand arrows. Or if I'm in a position to where I just need to kill this thing, or I need to kill like Needle Queen, I can kill that with Thousand Arrows uh, after I get a little bit of chip damage off on it with anything on the rest of my team. So, yeah, that's pretty much what this thing is. It 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 wins. <laughs> it's so so good this match. So then the secondary win con is actually my Reggie Alecki because with choice specs, 244 speed, uh, max special attack, modest. And 12 in HP, I actually outspeed Choice Scarf Zapdos, which is lit. I have Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Swift, and Rapid Spin. Uh, I had Bandit on here for a while because Body Slam actually two it KOs um, uh, Needle Queen if it's not full HP. If it's like 108, which is about the most I could see him investing, um, it just straight up two shots it after Stealth Rocks and a Spike, which you will see that I do have on the team. Uh, so I had that on for a really long time, but then I realized that if I don't end up killing Tangrowth, then Tangrowth just hard walls it. And Electro Ball, I would have to like switch out, switch back in. Electro Ball, like barely two shots. Like it's just a really big issue. But Choice Specs, if I get rid of Needle Queen, it two shots the entire team. Max HP, um, Cryo, gone. If his Raikou switches in, it doesn't, <laughs> it, I want to know the calc again. Uh, Reggie Lecky versus Raikou. Does 47 to 56% to no bulk Raikou if it is Assault Vest. It does 32 to 38%, so it's pretty much a two shot. It, it does stupid amounts of damage it okos scissor it uh okos necrozma depending on its set it okro it okos literally everything it is so 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 strong uh that if if i'm able to get rid of needle queen this thing will be the kill leader of this game which is which is amazing and that's what i'm hoping for and then i have rapid spin on here because if uh like they end up getting up uh t spikes or webs or something like that whenever i bring this thing in on pretty much any threat of theirs like especially scissor if it's not set up and it forces a switch out in a needle queen i can rapid spin for free free rapid spin to keep hazards off my side of the field but to also keep hazards up on their side of the field now i mentioned that i have a game plan for every single lead so i went over my two win cons my so one lead that's possible is shuckle lead if i see shuckle i'm leading off with zygarde i'm clicking uh i'm clicking Dragon Dance first, and then I'm spamming Thousand Arrows until I die, because at plus one, it forces in the Tangrowth, and then once Tangrowth comes in, I can kind of sort of play around it, I can chip it down a little bit, and even then, I break pretty much everything, and it would force him to Encore. I've also considered Sub, but I don't really think that's as good, uh, but if I see... If I see the Shuckle, that's going to be the game plan, is to just get this thing in, Click Dragon Dance, click Thousand Arrows, expecting Encore. If he keeps setting up hazards, I'm then going to go for a substitute, and then I'm going to set up another Dragon Dance, and I'm going to start going to town. So that's kind of the goal for that. But pretty much every other lead, Rillaboom is my best lead. I'm bringing Choice Banded Rillaboom. I'm bringing a super offensive team with these first three mods, pretty much. Well, I guess not. Zygarde's really spadef, but... Um, I'm bringing Choice Banded Rillaboom. I have enough speed for max speed, modest... Um, Necrozma, I have no speed for max speed, not a modest Necrozma with uh, Grassy Glide, U-Turn, Darkest Lariat, and Wood Hammer. I wanted to have a um, superpower on here to be able to nuke Scizor if that's the switch into this. Like, I kind of expected Fizdef Scizor, but at the same time, none of my mocks brought it. All my mocks realized that I was really weak to SD Scizor, so they brought SD, Banded, stuff like that. So... I wasn't going to worry about it. I'm just going to bring a different check to it. Uh, but Grassy Glide, U-Turn, Darkest Rain, Woodhammer, Adamant Choice, Banded Woodhammer. If they lead off with Needle Queen, unless they're max HP, it kills almost 100% of the time. So it's like 93% maximum to max HP. Uh, I'm sorry, minimum to max HP. Needle Queen. So that's going to be my main my main lead if I see Needle Queen come in. So if I get rid of it, then I just bring in uh, Reggie Alecki and then I just go to town. So that's going to be my main lead there. And then Darkest Lariat is there just to be able to break through Iron Defense Necrozma if Iron Defense Necrozma does come. Because I do not want to just <laughs> lose. It's so like Iron Defense Meteor Beam Necrozma. I want to be able to still uh, hit it pretty hard with Choice Banded Darkest Lariat and ignore the boosts. So next up we have probably my favorite set. <laughs> because um, as of right now, Rillaboom pressures, uh, pressures the Needle Queen quite a bit. 
Zygarde beats it, and then Reggie, like he needs it gone in order to win. Hold on, D-Ray's messaging me. Okay. Um, so Savali Ghost. I'm running multi-attack rest sleep talk. <laughs> I'm only running three attacks because I want uh, I don't want to run. I don't want to hit another move aside from multi-attack with sleep talk. I literally just don't want to. I do not want Shadow Claw. I do not want to hit parting shot in case defiant um thing comes in, Zapdos comes in. I don't want to take anything. I want to be able to just click multi-attack until <laughs> the cows come home pretty much. This is gonna be one of my main switch ins to Nido Queen because I do take two modest life orb earth powers uh, from Nido Queen if I'm at max, especially with grassy terrain recovery. I can multi-attack, I can multi-attack, and then I can rest as they go for earth power. And then as long as I get a multi-attack on the third hit, I kill Nido Queen. If I get multi-attack as Zapdos comes in, I'm also EV'd to almost always live two uh, Choice Scarf Brave Birds from Zapdos after Stealth Rocks, not including Grassy Terrain Recovery, of course. Uh, so like that could make it a little bit easier. But aside from that, this thing just kind of sort of breaks everything. And if uh, <laughs> if Tangrowth is the switch into this, then that's really good because I get to scout out if it is... Um, I get to scout out if it's Rocky Helmet. I get to scout out a lot of its set. And I can actually stall out uh, even Synthesis Tangrowth 1v1 with this thing if it's Fizz Def because I just multi attack rest sleep talk until I die. So, uh, it, it and then I can't even die because he can't toxic me. So, uh, I'm really expecting this to do a lot of work. I wish I didn't have to run rest sleep talk. I wish I, I, wish I could run like U turn to be able to drop in Reggie Lecky or to drop in something like that. But I just, I cannot risk getting rest or sleep talk or like getting getting a different move off of sleep talk after i've rest whenever multi-attack just hits everything so hard at two shots into Krasma. offensive scissor doesn't want to take two it can almost two shot max hp uh Nido queen it doesn't do a whole whole lot to uh tangrowth but it can two shot um both zapdos and cryo and then it can also two shot uh raikou depending on its investment uh, i believe let me double check that so i don't sound like a big old idiot yeah like it can it just does so much damage and then versus zapdos just so you guys can see that as well it's 43 to 51 so after stealth rocks it is a 99.9 percent .9 chance to do a ko so it just does so much damage it is so strong versus their opponent they do not have a good uh, ghost resist aside from greed end and greed end is not coming in this game next up I'm sorry this is a longer team builder. I really want to go in depth with this because I'm going to try really hard in this league to just win. I want to do so well. Next up, we have Colossal. Colossal is going to be my main Zapdos check. If Zapdos comes in, I'm going into Colossal. If he leads Zapdos and I lead Rillaboom, I'm going hard into this, expecting either Brave Bird or U-Turn. Either one, if I get the Flame Body Burn, pfft, that thing is no longer a threat to my entire team and I'm not worried about a thing. Um, then my Silvali Ghost just does even better at walling it. It's absolutely phenomenal. But I have Stealth Rock, Spikes, Burn Up, and Scald. I have Burn Ups, that way I can get rid of my Fire Typing, and if I'm in Grassy Terrain, that then allows me to live things like EQs from Tangrowth. It allows me to live in Earth Power from Nido Queen if it's not Modest Life Orb. It does a whole lot of damage to a bunch of different things. And then I also have Scald to be able to get Cheeky Burns on things like Scizor if I need to, if I've already used Burn Up, something like that. But uh, Max Fizz Def, Chopperberry to be able to take a close combat, or something along those lines if um I need to take a fighting move from Zapdos. But... I can live. Uh, Ghost for fighting move. If he gets burned by flame body, I go hard into Silvali. I wall it anyway. So really good, really good defensive pivot, really good hazard setter. And I, and I, I know I haven't said this yet, but if I get up a stealth rock and a spike, everything on my entire team can two shot everything on his entire team. It is unbelievable how great these six are just offensively, especially like these two here. Phenomenal. Last, we have a Cobalion that is phenomenal. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about this Cobalion set. It is designed to uh, beat and lure in Needle Queen. I can set up a Swords Dance on things like Tangrowth, Force in the Needle Queen. They go for Earth Power. I Magnet Rise. I set up another SD and then I break it with Iron Head. And the combination of Iron Head plus Rillaboom should be able to guarantee take out Needle Queen early on in the battle for Reggie Lucky to clean up. And that is the main goal because. Uh, just to go over a couple more really important calcs, like mainly Reggie Alecki. <laughs> like if you're if you look at this uh, versus Necrozma, if you look at Necrozma, it does 85 to 100 to max HP. <laughs> it does uh, versus 
Uh, the standard Fizdef Rocky Helmet Tangrowth does 64 to 76 versus uh, versus Cryogonal. It does 63 to 75. Like it just nukes everything. The other really important thing to note about Cryogonal is I fully expect Cryogonal, Cryogonal to come because I think that he just loves it too much to not bring it. And with this thing being really, really, really spadef, I can actually bring this thing in on it, get up that free swords dance that I wanted. If uh, Tangrowth comes in next and they only have EQ to hit me, I magnet rise up, I get up another SD, and then I can break uh, Tangrowth for my Rillaboom to clean up by clicking Grassy Glide, Woodhammer, things like that, or even then my Regieleki as well because I need chip damage on that thing uh and that's why i'm running close combat i did have sacred sword on here originally so i wouldn't take the defense drops but uh i just don't do enough to tangrowth i need uh the attack investment uh and close combat to be able to do enough to it uh, i believe i need to be a plus four I'm also going over the calcs again because I'm about to play and I want to refresh myself of the calcs. Typically, if I don't go over calcs in team builder, then it's because of that. So yeah, if I'm at plus four, I guarantee two shot it like synthesis. And then if I'm at 66, I do 88%. So I kill after stealth rock. So that is what uh, the attack investment is for. And if I get up to plus four versus Nido Queen, so you can see Iron Head is doing 101% minimum to max HP. If they're max HP, it's doing 85 to 100. So that is where all of those calcs came into play. That's Stealth Rocks plus a spike, um, things of that nature. So I really like this team. I'm really proud of it. Uh, I worked really, really hard on making sure everything was perfect, even though like some of these sets just look kind of sort of thrown together, like Colossal, Fizdef is standard, standard speed creep, standard speed creep. <clears throat> The synergy of the team was super important to me, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut right into the battle now after we've done 16 minutes of team builder, but I hope you guys did enjoy the more in-depth team builder. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the battle. Alrighty, guys, and we are in here with the battle with D-Ray. We have connected. We already said it in the DMs, but have fun to my boy D-Ray. I just want to win, man. That's all I can really say. I really want to win. I really, really want Reggie Alecki to put in the work. I really want... Uh, Zygarde to put in the work. I just I want everything if you guys are hyped for the EWT Please make sure to leave a like down below for me and comment. What what is your favorite member of the squad that we bring the squad? Okay, so let me see cryo don't let me see Raikou. Let me see cryo <laughs> Like as as much as I don't want to see cryo. Let me see it over Raikou more than anything <clears throat> Uh, no cryo. Okay, he just brought his top six. That's kind of shocking, but somewhat understandable. Okay. Gonna lead off with Rillaboom, just like I have planned to this entire time. And we're set. I'm just gonna let it sit down for a minute. Um, so things to note, if they lead off with Zapdos, I'm gonna go hard into Colossal. If they lead off with Nidoqueen, I'm clicking Woodhammer immediately. If they lead off with... Uh, Tangrowth, I'm going to click U-turn. If they lead off with Scizor, I'm probably going to click U-turn. If they lead off with Raikou, I might just click Woodhammer. Um, overall, though, saw top six. I Definitely no surprises. Let's go ahead and lock it in. I'm nervous. Very, very nervous. I'm hoping that... I'm hoping that Needle Queen is offensive. Because if it is, I can just kill with Rillaboom. And like no shot, it outspeeds me. Okay. Ooh, Raydramon. That is Raikou. Interesting lead. Um, I'm just gonna click U-turn. I think. I mean, realistically, Choice Bandit Grassy Glide could kill this thing, like, depending on how much speed he has. 
Uh, I'm going to take a couple of minutes because the rest of the, the game is pretty easy. I'm just going to click U-turn. I'm not going to overthink it too much. Uh, if they Volt Switch, then that's fine. I need the damage off on this thing in order for Reggie Lucky to kill it anyway later on. They go for Volt Switch, cool. I get it for U turn 181 to 138. 24. Mm. Ooh, right into Scizor. Okay, that's cool. Let's get off a nice U turn. Gonna drop in this thing. Part of me wants to go straight for a burn up. He's lefties. Okay. Part of me also wants to get up rocks. Um, because rocks are kind of important versus everything. But if I go for burn up. I'm gonna go for burn up. Hopefully he doesn't have sand tomb. <laughs> That's like the only thing that worries me a little bit. But everything else this thing can't really touch me. Even with like superpower because I'm Choppleberry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he is a little bit more of what I expected with the fatter scissor instead of the SD. But you know what? This thing coming in is kind of fine. It's kind of okay. Go for the nice burn up. Nice. Now he's gonna go for a scald here, so let's see what I'm gonna go into. Oh, he's uh, lefties on this too. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't really have much I want to switch into a scald, except for this, because I can rest it off. I kind of wish I got up rocks there. I really wish I got up rocks there. Because the next time this cycle happens, I could have gotten up a spike. Goes for Scald. That's fine. Shouldn't do that much. Just don't get the burn, please. Got the burn. That sucks. Um, part of me wants to rest immediately. I'm just going to rest immediately. It's like if they Volt Switch, I'll be able to then get up to full. If they go into Nidoqueen, I can begin to do my thing. Also, next time I get in Rillaboom, I might set up on Scizor. With my Zygarde. Yeah. He's going to see that I'm Silvali Ghost, and I think his only real switch into this is Tangrowth, which... Unless he wants to let me have Nidoqueen. Okay. So now it comes down to what I want to do. Because... Part of me wants to go for a sleep talk just to scout this thing's item. And just to scout what he's going to do here. See if he's going to go for energy ball. See how fizz he is. Because this multi-attack is going to be doing 20 to 23. He might also think that like this is his opportunity to go into pretty much anything else and get up his rocks, maybe. Anything like that. But um, 
If I get two multi attacks, it just it blows something ass backwards. Okay. Multi attack, nice. That did about 20 to 25. He's stomping tantrum. Over EQ, that's good. And he's also not Rocky Helmet. So. Here's what we're gonna do next. He's leftovers on three Pokemon. Okay. I'm gonna go for another sleep talk because he realistically does it doesn't seem like he can do much to me. Let's get another multi attack. Stinks, but okay. Goes for grass knot. So he is exactly what I was expecting him to be, which is the grass knot um thing. Okay, now that I see he's going for Grass Knot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hard into my Cobalion, Cobalion, whatever. Because Grass Knot's going to bounce off this thing. To Roman. Perfectly fine by me. Perfectly fine by me. Man, if I went for if I went for multi-attack there, <laughs> this thing took a lot. Yeah, that thing would have taken like a quarter, uh like 37 or so. Uh, I'm gonna SD. Because the best th this thing can do is hit me with a superpower, and I don't think it will. And he has to be careful because if he goes into um, his bird, he has to click close combat in order to kill me. But he doesn't know if I'm Choppleberry or Lefties yet, so I think he's going to go into Needle Queen here. Raidramon. Okay. Do I die to an Aura Sphere from this thing? I do not. Now, plus two CC kills. So I'm getting rid of this thing. If they go into literally anything else... I still claim a kill. Like, even Necrozma. Yep. I actually still take an Aura Sphere from this. Nido Queen, this is what I wanted. Oof. Close combat did nowhere near 50. Thunderbolt does not kill me. Perfect. Now I click Iron Head. And this thing's now in range of Choice Specs Swift. If he stays in here, of course. Withdraws Aria. What are you going into? Okay.
Aura Sphere still never kills me. Um... I don't think it's worth it, though. But I don't know what else to go into. Um... Unless he's... He's not even boosted. He's lefties. Um... I'm gonna click CC again in case they Volt Switch, but... Thunderbolt never kills me, does 69% maximum, I'm at 80-something. Gets the para, don't do this. Okay, thank you, at least this thing's gone. Damn it! Now I can't break down the Needle Queen the way I wanted. That sucks. That sucks. Um... If he goes into his bird, I'm going to go into my Reggie Lycan. I'm going to click Swift, because Choice Spec, Swift... I wish I could save this thing. I wish I could save this thing, but I can't. Um... Actually, yes, I can. That's false. I can. Because having this to be able to CC the thing if I wanted to. Thunderous Kick. Perfect. And now I get a free multi-attack. Throat Chop. Ooh. Is this kill? No way it fucking kills. No shot. Perfect. So now... Now I'm going to sack it off. Got the damage I need for it to be in range of... I th think that's almost in range of Choice Band of Grassy Glide. It is really close. If I can get up rocks... So I know this thing is in Choice Scarf, and I know he's going for a Thunderous Kick. Am I able to play around this at all? I don't think so. I don't think I can play around this at all. I just kind of have to go for an Iron Head. Which sucks. Um... Okay. So now I'm going to go into my Regieleki. And I'm going to click Choice Spec Swift. This is where I really wish I was banded. <laughs> if I was banded with Body Slam right here, I just destroyed the Nido Queen. Going to go for Swift. Let's see how much this does. Ooh. Good damage. Um, now expecting... Hmm. How do I want to do this? I'm going to do this. I have a plan. I have a plan. And I only need one sack for this plan to work. Goes for Ice Beam. That's why That's why I didn't want to go into um, my Rillaboom. But now, we do this. And... I'm going to go for Thousand Arrows first, just in case they stay in, but they shouldn't. They should go into their 
uh, Tangrowth every single time, but just in case, I don't want to risk it. Like, Skitter Smack is the safer play here, I understand, but... Dirty nudes. If I click Skitter Smack there, the game was over. <clears throat> yep. And now I click Skitter Smack. And this game becomes ours. He's also not choice scarfed on Zapdos. Perfect. Go for Grass Knot. And now Grass Knot no longer breaks the sub, boys. Uh, except he crits. <laughs> oh, man. He kept me waiting around and everything. And now I'm getting hacked. Okay. Stomping Tantrum. Does this break sub still? No. Yeah, there's no shot that ever breaks my sub. Okay. Let's start to do this. Goes for Grass Knot here. Okay. I'm going to try to get up to plus three. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I think I'm only going to be able to get up to plus two because that stupid crit, man. And the para on Cobalion is so huge. Because, like, if I was able to keep that around, I would have sacked off my... Uh, it's not worth worrying about. So, at... Minus one... Okay. So I think what I have to do here is I think I have to go for sub and then skitter smack a couple times. Man. I'd be at like 40 more percent right now if uh, I didn't get crit. Okay, yeah, I have to start skitter smacking this thing so that way I can actually live the following grass knot. Skitter smack is a three hit KO in, at this range, so it's kind of what I have to go for at this point. I hit, which is nice. 35%, perfect. So at minus three, his Grass Knot is doing 12 to 14 percent. I'm at 44. If 
If I hit, I guaranteed live this. Grass Knot, I guaranteed live. Nice. And now Skitter Smack does claim one. Am I in range of defensive Scizor Bullet Punch? It'll be close, but I don't think so. The 17 to 21 if he is defensive, and I'll be at about 44. Or no, it does 17 to 21%, I'll be at about 22, I think. And if they go into Zapdos... They go into this. What? I click Skitter Smack again because if they go into Tangrowth, I need to be able to kill it. And if they stay in with this, it's in range of Swift, and then I win with Reggie Lecky. Okay, they were really about to just sack this thing off. Okay, how do I get out of this still? I... Man, if I click Thousand Arrows there, what? They just lost to a Lecky. Um... I do still have ways out of this. Like, plenty of ways. I'm gonna go into this. U-turn guaranteed kills. If they go into Scizor, I'm gonna go into... Coal. And I'm gonna click Burn Up, I think. Yep, they're gonna go Scizor. <sighs> do I click? How do I click Swift? No, I'm going to go into Coal. I'm going to get up a Spike. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up a Spike. Yep. Because if I do that, Aleki wins. Glad we had this talk. I go for spikes. If they go Nido Queen here, then I go into my Lucky afterwards. I click Swift. Man, I almost clicked Burn up there, bro. What are you doing? Okay. what I'm going to do. That's what I have to do. Expecting the Earth Power. They shouldn't go for Ice Beam again. They should know I live it. Don't go for Ice Beam. Perfect. Now I click U-Turn. And if Scizor comes in, I'm going to click... I don't know if I'm going to click Burn Up. My Lucky can still win this. Yeah. Especially... I'm trying to think of how I actually want to do this. Does this kill? Oh my god. Okay. How bulky is he? Going into this on the Ice Beam Sludge Wave, whatever. Okay.
Man, this battle is not going anything how I was hoping. Luckily, I can go back into my Rillaboom. And I click U-Turn, and it definitely dies to U-Turn and or Spikes, and then I drop in a Lucky, and I click Thunderbolt. And if they switch out, they can't come back in on Spikes. And Regilecki versus Tangrowth. This thing can't come back in on Spikes. Yep, I drop in a Lucky. Unless that thing is boots. If that thing is boots, then we're in a world of trouble. Okay. Moment of truth. Are you boots? <laughs> Let's play a little game. Play a game. Are you boots? If you're boots, you go into it and you win. You're boots, aren't you? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we got them. So Tangrowth comes in, 64 to 76. Stomping Tantrum never kills me. Yeah, this thing dies, bro. Like, he can switch out to gain Regenerator, but, like, nah, he's just gonna sack it. Are you AV, maybe? Nah, didn't even matter. <sighs> Aleki. My friend. Max HP Necrozma. Takes 85 to 101. And I think that is his only saving grace. U3. Let's see. Max HP Necrozma. Let's go for it. Thunderbolt. <laughs> yes! Yes! Reggie Alecky did it! Reggie Alecky did it! <laughs> yes! After... Yes! Reggie Alecky <laughs> coming in! This is what I wanted! Oh my god! Yes! Yes! Bullet Punch doesn't kill me! Oh! <sighs> Reggie Alecki, bro, and people say this is a bad Pokemon, what? Like, he played around it super, super well, he preserved his Nidoqueen, like, and I and I misplayed around it, too, like, I made plays that I'm gonna reflect back after this battle that, like, okay, I should have just attacked what was in front of me, I shouldn't have predicted, but at the same time, like, he played around it super, super well, he preserved his Nidoqueen, and this still happens, like, this Pokemon is amazing. It outsped his Scarfers. It outsped uh, plus two Necrozma. It outsped literally everything. GG to D-Ray, man. This, this Pokemon, I'm so excited to use it. People say it's a bad Pokemon, but look at it cleaning up, getting four kills week one. I don't know how it... I think the spike kill goes to... Um, to... 
colossal but man reggie alecki coming in clutch yes even after the para after the crit oh man i was worried for a minute because like i needed that thing dead and if it was boots oh my god but that was such a phenomenal battle gg to d-ray make sure you guys go check him out d-ray is absolutely phenomenal he's going to be at my wedding along with the boys in call listening in we got galvanade we got mono and we got uh six foot hacks they're all watching I'm super excited for it to like see them all in person and I absolutely love D-Ray as a content creator so make sure you guys go check out his stuff but with that guys I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here uh, actually no stay tuned because I'm gonna talk after the battle about some of the misplays I made and see where it could have been better but with that being said uh, let's go ahead and jump right into that portion of the video Alrighty, guys so let's go ahead and talk about some plays that could have been made in this battle because as I said I did have Leo mono and galvanate watching and call uh, so they did have some things that I could have done better immediately and I 100% agree with them so I kind of want to mention those a little bit so starting out uh, the lead off Raikou versus Rillaboom like really good really fine you turn immediately go into colossal and what I should have done here so I clicked burn up right and then right here, turn one, pretty much. Well, it's like turn three, whatever. Uh, but I do not have a fire typing, so I'm not quad weak to. Uh, I'm not quad weak to uh, scald. So what I could have done here is instead of uh, going f or like switching out or anything like that, I could have gone for a spike here, and I could have put a lot of pressure on the team since grassy terrain was up. They were getting recovery or. Uh, rocks might have been a little bit better because it would have hit zapdos but either way i could have gotten a hazard up here which would have been a big play early on that i should have done better and i think that it was i think i could have i think i should have thought of that because in all of my calcs i knew how important a spike plus a stealth rock was but um even in all of my mocks i struggled to get up hazard so right there i could have done a little bit better here going into silvali getting burned whatever and then this exchange right here with uh the rest and getting a little bit of sleep talk and then i i think i played this well by getting the two sleep talk turns right so i got the two sleep talk turns and then i switched out meaning that the next time whenever i came back in i could just attack that was like not good playing on my end to be able to remember the sleep talk turns but just like keeping like a mental note of that which was really good and then this is where i think the uh the game really like kind of sort of just like swung in my court um so whenever i went for close combat did that much and then i go for magnet rise get that out i go for iron head does that much i get a crit on him which sucks but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because i was gonna click um i was gonna click cc here no matter what so the crit while it does suck for d-ray to have this uh crit happened to him and be that low of health to where i i have to click uh i could click iron head to kill him I could also just click close combat, which is what I did anyway, uh, to kill this thing. But whenever he got the para, uh, it it sucks because uh, what this thing could still do, even at this low amount of health that I'm at, how much am I at? I'm at 48 health. Even at this low amount of health, I put enough pressure to where I can actually switch into Scizor. I can still click close combat versus Scizor, and I can actually still outspeed Tangrowth. I can do a lot of stuff with this thing still. Uh, to where it's annoying for my opponent to have to deal with, and where I could just click close combat once, get off a good amount of damage, and put something in range of Thunderbolt from my Regieleki. So, uh, Raikou goes down, whatever. And then here, I, I think I played pretty poorly here. Um... Ultimately, I could have saved this to get off a multi-attack on something, uh, whether it was the Needle Queen, the Scizor, or something. I could have also rested up on the Needle Queen because it turns out he was really defensive Needle Queen, and I was playing it like he was offensive. Uh, but he was really defensive Needle Queen, and I should have known that from the calcs, but I didn't want to waste the time to look at it. But I guess it's not really wasting time. Uh, so I play pretty poorly here because what I do is I... I pretty much get two sacks like I sack off two things and I take a lot of damage on something else when I didn't need to um, with the throat chop on my Silvali and then the the Swift and then from here on out I I think I played perfectly I think okay so right here I want to calc something because he was in fact shook a berry um, versus Needle Queen was he in range of thousand arrows because if he wasn't in range of a uh, thousand arrows yeah he was super fizz def man 252 108 bold 
so believe it or not, he's out of range of Thousand Arrows here. He is completely out of range of Thousand Arrows. Um, Ice Beam doesn't kill me, but still, it would have put him in range to where he would have died to Swift the next turn, and then Reggie like he would have done the same thing. But um, here, if I clicked Skitter Smack, I didn't have to risk the crit. I could have subbed up, and then the game would have been fine. So that was a massive misplay on my end that I'm regretting. This whole interaction here would have been different. And then uh, here, here getting up a spike was a really smart play because if they weren't boots, then I was fine. Um, but at the same time, if I clicked, if I clicked a fire move on that Scizor. Oh man, that just would have been, that would have been absolutely phenomenal for me. So a couple of things that I think I could have done better, a couple of things I think I could have done uh, a lot better, like especially getting up the spikes early on. Um, but you know what? I'm still really happy with the way this went. I'm really happy that Reggie Lecky did what I wanted it to do. And uh, ultimately, I think that the team, I, I think I built a team that is perfect for the matchup that I could have had. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching, watching this extra long video for Draft League. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoy like the more in-depth stuff that I'm doing with this. Uh, but yeah, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.